just try it the worst that can happen is you don't like it and guess what you can pick pack your bags up and go back home or you can go to a new place but i do think it's important for us to learn how to step out of our comfort zones try new things and just be different but now i have to adjust to this new life and i am scared so my dad just called me and he asked me if i was okay and i just instantly start crying it's like everybody just keep asking me if i'm okay and i'm not and I mean, I'm sure I will get adjusted and everything, but this is crazy. Like, why did I do this? Everybody, like, you're so brave, you're so brave. But I feel crazy as hell, like, to move away from all of your family, everything you know by yourself is insane. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sierra. For those who are new, don't forget to hit the subscribe button just to stay up to date with my latest uploads. So here on my channel, we are all about creating a life you love. So that being said, we're gonna hop into today's video. So normally on Wednesdays, I do videos focused on branding, marketing, and entrepreneurship. But today we're doing something a little bit different. So today, as I am filming this, it has been officially one year since I've been in Dallas, Texas. And for those who do not know, I moved across the country by myself from Michigan to Dallas, Texas, and I've been here for a year. So today I'm just gonna be doing a little bit of Q&A session. Um, I gathered some questions from my social media pages just to see what kind of questions people had um, when it comes to moving across the country, moving by yourself, and just learning kind of about the process of how I did it, what I would do differently. And just if I have any tips or tricks for people who are thinking about doing that big move also. So I'm going to go ahead and hop into those questions. It's just, it's just bittersweet to think about. Like today I went to work and I'm like, wow, I've been here for a year. Like the year literally flew by and I, I can honestly say like, this is one of the best decisions that I've made for my life so far. I'm not like this huge risk taker. Um, I'm very scared to do a lot of things. So this was very big of me and I did it by myself. So kudos to me. So let's go ahead and hop into the questions. Like I said, I got these questions off of social media. Um, I post the question on my Instagram, my Facebook, um, just to see what people were curious about. So the first question is, what inspired your decision to move to Dallas alone? Um, honestly, I did not want to move alone. I was really like pressuring my boyfriend to move with me to like find a job. But at the end of the day, you have to realize that all roads, everybody can't go with you. And not to say that they can't go with you at, at all, but they may not be going at the same time as you. They may not be on the same route as you. So what I did, I'm like, well, this is the decision that I'm making and I'm just gonna go for it and at the end of the day you have to have like you know that trust within yourself I mean if it doesn't work out like you can always go home so that was just kind of my motto with it and um yeah I mean ideally I would not have wanted to move here alone but I just had to but I feel like it taught me a lot on how to really just kind of live by myself so never lived by myself before so I would say it definitely helped me so the second question is how did you find the job opportunity in texas well the, i was actually just looking i was like i'm moving like i just feel like life had got so hectic and i was at a point where i kind of just hated the space that i was in and i was ready for like a drastic change so i was really just looking i'm like i was applying for texas and i was applying for georgia i had a cousin in texas and my friend lives in georgia so i'm like either way i'm getting wherever the first you know offer happens that's where i'm moving so the first offer happened in dallas and i feel like i kind of manifested this i have a video on my page where i talk about how i manifested this move and it was just literally so like ordained like i can honestly say it just happened like effortlessly um i saw a job i applied for it i made myself i made myself the obvious candidate and i got the job so that's pretty much how that worked out. Um, 
Can you share some early challenges you faced when you first arrived to Texas? I would definitely say it was definitely country coming from Detroit. Like it was definitely like a different kind of country vibe. But I feel like I did experience some racism, but that's a story for another day. But you would think like, I didn't experience this racism from white people. So it was just like, it was definitely like just odd. But I would say, honestly, I feel like the state is like very conservative, but I could honestly say, I feel like the longer, I mean, I've only been here a year, but I feel like I'm leaning more towards maybe I'm more conservative as well. So other than that, I feel like the only challenges I would say early on was just like, I really didn't know like the lay of the land. I didn't know where I was going. The GPS acts crazy here, like because there's so many different freeways and stuff. So it's just like the GPS gets confused and it's just, it was just a lot to navigate because it's a Dallas is huge in comparison to Detroit. So it was just like, between the culture shock, how large it was, the freeways are insane. It was just, it was, it was definitely an adjustment, I would say, but I don't, I don't think it's anything like too outrageous. Did you have any concerns about making friends and building a social circle in Dallas? I definitely had concerns and like, I would definitely say like, I'm not an extroverted person. I'm not gonna put myself out there to make friends. So I would definitely say that aspect of my life is still pretty like dry. Um, I made a lot of connections at work, but a lot of those people are older than me. And it's nothing wrong with having older friends because they obviously can pour in wise counsel to me. But I don't really have any people around my age who are my direct friends. Um, lately I've been hanging out um, with my friend who moved here, her coworkers, and they're like closer to my age range. So. But other than that, like, I have not put myself out there to make any friendships. <laughs> I'm not a risk taker, but, you know, I mean, I feel like I've been here a year now, so I feel like it's going to come. It's going to come naturally, but I'm, I'm definitely going to start to try a little bit more. I will. Don't laugh at me, y'all. What advice would you give to someone relocating for a job in a new city? I would definitely say save as much money as possible. I mean, like have money ready to go. Cause I can, I feel like it can be a lot of expenses that kind of sneak up on you as you move. Things are different, things cost different. One thing I want to also mention is make sure you are renegotiating your offer. Sometimes they'll give you more money, a sign on bonus or even re relocation. So always consider asking for more money, even if you're not moving. It's just, I would say have a nice cushion for yourself if you were actually thinking about relocating. That's something that I didn't do. I just was like, I'm moving and I was like in an astronomical amount of debt. So like I moved for more money, but I'm still in a lot of debt because it's like the cost of living here is a little bit more. Groceries and inflation, like everything is like literally crazy right now. So it just... It would have made more sense if I planned this appropriately and it didn't make it like a spur of the moment thing. So I would say, if you were thinking about it, really plan it out. Let it make sense for you and set yourself up for success because you don't want to move somewhere and be like an astronomical dentist. I'm, I'm telling you, you do not want to do that. Um, how do you maintain a long distance relationship? And this has been the most hardest thing about the whole move in general. I feel like prior to me moving here, I feel like I was very like codependent on my boyfriend. I wouldn't even say this like it's a bad thing, but like he's literally like my best friend and we literally like did everything together. Lived in the same state so I could see him if I needed him. But now I have to adjust to this new life. And it was just like, even if he was getting on my nerves, like he, I needed him here. So I feel like we also didn't plan that like strategically either because I actually was in therapy prior to me moving. And my therapist told me like, already get these flights like on the books, like, <clears throat> she told me like do not go months without seeing each other she said somebody needs to be flying 
every month and it just honestly didn't work out like that and i feel like it did cause a lot of tension and i'm sure there are plenty of like virtual dates and things you can do but i just feel like we did not do a good job of having a long distance relationship but um i did fly home as much as i could and he flew here as much as he could like with his job because i feel like we both have hybrid work schedule so it's kind of hard like when you're demanded to be in an office space so I feel like we kind of did not the best we could because we definitely both could have done better but he's moving so so I'm happy but um I would definitely say advice to people in long distance relationships make sure that you're continuously talking I would definitely say like virtual dates is uh, obvious I would definitely say keep up the certain kind of rules and respect even though you're not in the same like space like i feel like it can become different like when a person is out of sight out of mind so just make sure you're still fostering and pouring into your relationship what did you learn about yourself during this move i feel like i learned that i can do hard things i feel like the thing I was most concerned about was really just living alone. I've never lived alone. Like, I've always lived with my mom. I've always had roommates. Um, after college, I lived with my boyfriend. It was like never a season where I really lived alone. And part of me is like, I could have lived alone after college. I really like wanted us to live together because I feel like I was just scared to live by myself. Like, I'm a very like high anxiety person and just very fearful. I would think about, oh, is somebody gonna break in? type of stuff so I did like have to learn to like overcome those fears and now I'm like I put my little bar lock on the door and I take my little butt to sleep and I call it a day like it's actually like peaceful to have your own space have it clean you don't have to pick up after people like it's just like it's a vibe living by yourself so I, I, I would say honestly if you haven't ever live by yourself before make sure you do that before you ever move in with a partner how did you find out about your favorite spots in the city like how did you go about I'm, I'm guessing they were saying like how did you find like places to hang out um, and I would say in the beginning I really just kind of just stuck to what was like locally and I live in a suburb of Dallas it's literally like five minutes from Dallas but I just would eat stuff in my suburb or I would go to the gym like I, I definitely thought it was important for me to keep up a routine so I would just kind of go to the places within my area and then like once I became more comfortable with people at work um I have a work bestie and her name is Rachel but she she's like she's older than me she has a kid like not too much uh younger than me so she really like i feel like holds that mother figure for me at work like she makes sure i know what's going on like she was like hey like today it was hr professional day she was like make sure you have your jeans on so i wore my jeans to work today or whatever and she just keeps me updated like she'll plan stuff um she's like let's go to happy hour she'll come pick me up so she really like you know helps me in that aspect and i just appreciate her for that because I obviously do not step out of my comfort zone and even at work like my cousin lives here actually so I've been to a few places with my cousin as well in the beginning but my cousin was like you're gonna find like most of your tribe probably at work but I work for an insurance a medical insurance company and it's a lot like it's just, I just feel like my age group isn't really there so, I mean, if they are, they're probably like in customer service or something. So it's not like everybody in my job is pretty much 40 and up. So, I mean, I had to make the best that I could. So, but obviously like I find spots through people I know or TikTok. If I want to try something, I look on TikTok and then if it's a hit, we'll keep going. How do you manage homesickness and what do you miss? about your family being so far away i would honestly say like the thing i hate the most is like the fomo like i have so much fear of missing out when the holidays come around like um last year i did thanksgiving here but luckily my mom had just moved here and we do have 
some family down here but not like family i grew up with so we went over their house for thanksgiving and it was just like different it's just like it it was nice but it just wasn't like what i was used to so i would definitely say like those family gatherings i really missed out on um and it's just hard it's just like I feel like I didn't see people too often at home because I'm so introverted, but it's also like now that I'm so far away, when everybody's hanging out, it's just like, oh, like I miss y'all, like I miss my family, but I'm not moving back. So it's like, it's, it's hard in that aspect. Um, I would definitely say it's harder like watching like the older people, it's just like, if things go wrong or like my great grandmother was in the hospital, it's just like, you're so far away and like to be updated by phone it's just like it's a nerve-wracking experience and i would say like even just watching everybody grow up like my little cousin started high school this year and it's just like i feel like i kind of miss the milestones of family and i would definitely say that's hard it's actually making me like almost nauseous to talk about but like what i've also learned here lately is this journey of life is yours and you're you're literally here on this earth just passing by and i know family is a bit a big aspect of our lives but you still have to make sure that you are doing what's best for your path as well and what i do appreciate about my my family and my village and my tribe is like nobody pressures me to be like oh you need to come back we miss you most of the time it's oh we need to figure out when we come to dallas type of thing so it's like they're so supportive like my family was so supportive of my move nobody tried to stop me like at all they were just like i'm so proud of you even like cousins like that i'm not even super close with came to my like my going away party and people were crying and they're just like i'm so proud of you and it really didn't kick in until i got down here and i was by myself and i'm like wow i really moved across the country by myself like i'm literally here by myself so i'm not about to get out but i'm not even by myself no more my mama moved here um and my friend Marisha moved here we just gotta get her to stay here um let's go to the next question because i'm getting emotional um do you have a routine that helped you adjust in this process i would definitely say as soon as i got here i had to figure out where the gym was the gym is the place where i go to kind of clear my mind and it helps me kind of like stay on track so if i know every day i'm going to the gym at 6 a.m it kind of just helped me get out of like my head early in the morning to, like let's get it let's go um also like being down here away from like all the distractions and stuff i just happened to lose weight i could not lose weight at home like granted i do have like i was having an issue with my thyroid but like once i moved here like the weight was just like falling off i really didn't have too much of a problem with the weight um i also made sure i found a church that I felt comfortable in and I feel like church has really like been a game changer so like I do think it's important that you find routines and places that you feel safe and places that make you kind of feel home so I'm like all right on Sundays I know I go to HEB which is a nice grocery store down here I'm gonna go to church I'm gonna go to the gym after I do all of that I found a place where I could do like my hot girl walk so I just really think it's important to kind of just learn how to romanticize life and romanticize where you are just really be grateful and have gratitude of like you know i'm far away from everybody but i'm gonna find beauty in this moment what are some of the challenges you face when it comes to your businesses um and your personal brand since moving to dallas so before i moved here i had a booming cake business at home and i really just like abruptly started and i apologize to all my clients like i don't even think i told anybody because i feel like in the beginning of the year somebody was like oh my god i need a cake and i'm like i moved to dallas <laughs> like that was so unprofessional but i don't know i just i'm telling you guys it was such an abrupt decision for me to move here and i yeah I just shut the website down i really didn't say anything else but people who had my number they were like inquiring so don't do that but um 
I would definitely say I put all business on pause. I'm not even gonna hold you up. Um, when I moved here, I was still in grad school. I recently just finished, so I don't have to worry about that anymore. But I felt like it was very hard for me to come here, do grad school, try to build a business and do all of that in a new space, at a new job, trying to find my way. So I just paused everything and I feel confident about my pause because now I'm picking, you know, my things back up. Um, I'm baking more. So now I take my baked goodies to work and everybody knows me. They're like, that's the sweet girl. And they're like, when are you bringing something in? So I feel like it's important for me to like bake stuff and bring it in because at that point you're building your network because people can be, you know, in a space and they're like, oh, I need somebody to make a cake. And they can be like, oh, my coworker, she can bake. She can do her thing. And then they can pass my cart or my Instagram along. So I think that is like an important piece of like making sure you um, continue to build your business in a new space. I would definitely say it's okay with pausing for a minute just to kind of get yourself in position to do it. Um, also, when it comes to like my social media stuff, my personal branding stuff, like everybody at my job, they see me as an expert. Like people come to me for advice all of the time. So that is something that I'm like trying to really tap back into. I don't feel like I have any like necessary barriers. I feel like word of mouth can be one of the best ways to really market yourself. And I feel like the most important piece of like continuing to build your business or staying afloat with your personal brand in a new space is just to be authentic and like don't really be afraid to sell yourself. And like I would say I paused everything in the beginning. I would kind of talk about it like here and there, like people, and I brought cookies in one time because cookies are like my new thing. I'm trying to perfect cookies because before I was just doing cakes. I had did a cake for a girl like early on at my job and I didn't really tell anybody and she didn't really tell anybody. But when I brought the cookies in, everybody was like, did you know Sierra bake? And she was like, oh yeah, she made a cake for my husband. It was so good. And everybody was like, you bake cakes? So I'm like, yeah so it's like don't be quiet about your stuff if you're good at something let it be known and then another girl's like oh yeah she made my little son's costume for halloween too and everybody's like and you can make costumes i'm like hold on nah i just have a cricket and a heat press like i could do a little something, something but i ain't like making no full blown costumes or whatever so i do think it's important to always be authentic always showcase your skills and like don't be afraid to do it i don't care if i'm at work you don't know who i am like you have to have a life outside of work and you have to build things outside of work like work is a place that is not like secure a job can tell you they have job security all they want but like when it's time to make cuts they're going to make those cuts and you might be a part of those cuts so make sure you're building something that you cannot be fired from just know that just a little nugget for y'all this is my last question what advice would you give to your past self when you were planning this move to Dallas alone? I would definitely say, I feel like the only thing I would say is try to pay off as much debt before I actually made this move. Because like I feel like the debt wasn't that big prior to my move, but like when you're moving, you're gonna start accumulating more debt anyway. Like. You got to get furniture. You got to do this. You got to do that. And I just feel like the expense, like I got a lot of money in my going away party, but it was also like the expenses, like so many surprise expenses come with moving like across the country. And I didn't take everything because like I just couldn't like in the short amount of time that I had, I think I had like a two month window. Like I couldn't pay for a U-Haul, couldn't do all of this, couldn't move everything. So I left a lot of stuff. I think some of my stuff is in my mom's storage unit at home. Some of my stuff is in my dad's house. Like I just feel like I did not give myself enough time. But at the same time, if an opportunity knocks, you need to take it because at the same time, like this opportunity wasn't gonna be available because guess what? I moved for a job for this for this specific job that I felt like was specifically made for me. Now it'd be different if it was just like, okay, it's a job, I can get another one. But as, as you guys may know, the job market is tough right now. So it's just like, I took an opportunity and I feel like overall, the quality of life that I get here in Texas is so different in comparison to Michigan. Like, even when it comes to like seasonal depression, I feel like I did not get seasonal depression this year. And because it's like, 
it does not get too cold here. I feel like maybe in February, or one week in February, it gets super cold. But like other than that, it was never too cold for me. I'm from Detroit, so I feel like everything you need is within the radius. It's so many like things to try and things to do here. It's so large. Lots of people are moving here, so it's not necessarily even like everybody is a Texan. Like everybody's a transplant like everybody is coming from other places here so it's not even like i feel like there is like a huge texas culture but i feel like it's it's beginning to change because so many different people are moving from all across the country to move here um so yeah i i like it um i feel like it has given me the space and opportunity to really grow really learn myself overcome fears like literally living by myself having to pay all of these bills by myself having to just figure out everything by myself and i would definitely say if you're thinking about it just do it and i feel like a lease is only a year if you do not like it you can always go home and i mean not necessarily in my case because my mom moved here so i don't necessarily have like a direct home to go to but i can always go home my dad has a room in his house like my bed my bed is at my dad's house like i had to buy a new bed when i came here because i wasn't trying to move all of that stuff so it's just like just try it the worst that can happen is you don't like it and guess what you can pick pack your bags up and go back home or you can go to a new place but i do think it's important for us to learn how to step out of our comfort zones try new things and just be different break curses, live life, and really just be on your own journey. Like you have to learn how to be an individual outside of your family, outside of your friends, outside of your norm of like what you're used to seeing. So, but in a nutshell, that's been my year in Dallas. Not super excited, but not super, super exciting, but I love my experience. It's been lots of growth for me. And I'm just excited to see like more, like it's only been a year. I spent a good chunk of that year like injured in a walking boot, not walking at all. So we'll see where Dallas takes us. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Never be scared to leave your hometown to grow. As much as you love your hometown, it's the one place that'll kill your dream if you stay there too long. You move to a new city, you lose nothing. You only gain an opportunity that can change your life. The thing about your hometown is it's never gonna change. You can always come back and do the same thing that you've been doing with the same people. But you go to a new city, it might be a new relationship that can change your life. It might be a new job opportunity that never been possible for you.